Did you ever want to find out how good your modeling skills really are? Maybe compete against others? That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'm going to talk to you about a competition event called Payload Altitude. Now this is one event that you can really test how good your skills really are because it is really involved with efficiency, making the rocket go as high as possible. Now this is the kind of the rocket that I'm going to talk about. And now the event is called Payload Altitude, so it involves a payload. Now this is the standard payload that is used in this event and basically it's a tube and it's a BT-20 size tube that's been filled with sand. Now maybe you can hear it rattling around in there. Um, and then it's been capped off. Now this weighs exactly one ounce. So the object of the event is to launch this payload as high as possible using a specific size rocket engine. Now there's two classes in this event, an A engine or a B engine. Um, now you also have to lift an altimeter in this event. Now there are three altimeters that you could use that are possible. Um, and they are the Perfect Fight Firefly, the Altus Metro Micro Peak, and the Adrell um, altimeter and that's this one here and these are uh, imported from Poland by North Coast Rocketry. Um, they can see there's three different sizes. Um, these will all fit in a, a rocket this size. Now unfortunately the Jolly Logic altimeters are too big currently. Um, so you're limited to probably one of these three. So I designed this rocket to use the biggest one, the Perfect Flight Firefly, uh, but then it can also use the smaller ones. Now which one do you want to use? Um, you'll have to weigh the options yourself. Um, the Perfect Flight is the, the least expensive, uh, but these are smaller and a little bit lighter. And now weight is critical, so sometimes you might want to lean towards a smaller altimeter. Now the contest rules say that the payload has to be completely enclosed in the rocket. Um, so this is a BT-20 size payload tube. So you have to put it into a 19 millimeter tube. Now these are a little bit harder to come by. Um, we're going to have this particular kit available. These are both kits that are going to be available from Apogee Components. You can see it fits nicely inside the tube. Um, and then you want to make the rocket as small as possible because drag is lower on a smaller rocket. Um, so it's completely enclosed. Now you have to carry the altimeter inside too. Now on this particular rocket the altimeter would go in first and it would slide all the way down here to the bottom of the tube. And then the payload goes on and then finally the nose cone and then to keep it together you simply wrap tape around the outside and that holds everything in there so it can't come apart. Now this is the shock cord. Um, it's not been attached to the booster section yet um, but that would be attached inside and then you'd either attach a streamer or a parachute to the shock cord right here. I would highly recommend a parachute and the reason why is this is kind of heavy um, and it's going to come down fast and uh, if, if it is possible for the nose cone to get crushed. This is a very lightweight nose cone um, and if you want to be, reuse it, use a parachute. If reusability is not your primary concern, go to a streamer which is a little bit lighter. Um, what else can I talk about? Oh, engines. Um, now the event is A engine or B engine. Now if you're using a B engine, you could use a rocket this size. Um, I'm going to shove this back into here so that it's out of the way. But this um, size rocket right here is not really optimal 
um, for A engine or B engine, but it's a good design for a qualified flight. Now some days you might go out to the launch range and it might be windy or it might be cloudy um, or you might be on a really small field. Um, so that in that case you want to use a single stage rocket like this and then just use a B engine and this is a B66 and just slide it in and it's taped into the rocket like that. Now this is, you're only finding one piece so you get one piece back. Um, again this is good for conditions that are not optimal. When you have a nice clear blue sky then you want to go to a rocket like this and this is kind of a strategy type of thing. Um, why would you go to a rocket like this? Um, the answer is it's skinnier down here so it's less drag um, and then also you can stage it and by staging it you can get rid of some of the weight. Uh, when you stage this rocket you want two, two A engines. Remember two A engines equal one B engine. So a B engine is heavier than two A engines. So that's why that's the, the best reason to use it. Um, and then on this one um, an A3 in the top stage and an A10 in the bottom stage and the reason for that is the A10 has a lot of kick and it's going to really push the rocket high and fast and then when it stages this drops away you lose a lot of weight you lose a lot of drag allowing this to go a lot higher. Um, you want to use the longest delay possible so that the rocket comes over the top and ejects because you don't care that it ejects right at the peak altitude because the altimeter inside is going to measure the peak altitude anyway. So go over the top, let it come down. You want to come down as far as you can. Why do you want to do that? Because when it ejects, it's closer to the ground, has less a chance to drift. So that's why you want to use a long delay and that's why I use a B66 if you're going to use it in a single stage like this. So I hope that gives you a little bit of strategy to use. This is not a hard event, uh, but it is challenging because you do have to optimize everything to be as lightweight as possible and to be as small as possible. Um, and in the future, I'm going to do a build on these kits uh, because I think, I think you'll learn a lot. Oh, one other thing. Um, you see the launch lug here on the side of the rocket? Don't use that. This is just for people that don't have piston launchers or a launch tower. I would recommend, highly recommend, flying it off of a piston launcher. Now, a piston launcher we've covered before in um, our advanced construction videos and we'll link to it in the description on this page that you see this video um, and that will tell you how to use a piston launcher. You could also use a tower launcher um, which helps you to also to remove the launch lug on the side of the rocket. That launch lug is going to contribute like 30% of the total drag of the rocket so by getting rid of it you can go a lot higher. So Again, my name is Tim Van Milligan. This is the advanced construction videos here at Apogee Components. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. Over here to the left, we have some videos um, that I think you're going to enjoy watching. Um, and down here at the bottom, leave a comment for us, for us. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this video. Thanks for coming. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.